Hi, so in this uh, video what I want to do is cover the very basics of a bit of an introduction to this concept of frontier molecular orbital theory. Now, First of all, I just want to say that this is an extremely complicated um, uh, theory. It has, you can go on for lectures and lectures dealing with uh, the concepts behind here. Um, what I'm wanting to do is just give a little bit of a, um, a taster about what, what this is about and how it applies within organic chemistry. In this particular video, we're just going to have a look at some of the uh, principles underlying this, and, and, and that's all. Um, <clears throat> so it starts off by just us considering what, what, what do we mean by molecular orbital? Um, and the good example that everyone uses because it really is the simplest, is just a molecule of hydrogen, which is two hydrogen atoms that have a bond between them. Um, so as chemists, that's what we do. We draw this line, meaning a bond, between two hydrogen atoms. Uh, but on the molecular level, um, we don't have a line that has two electrons sitting in this space over here. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that. And it arises from the atomic orbitals, right? so we take a hydrogen which has an atomic orbital, it's the s orbital and it's round, it looks like this, uh, and we take another hydrogen uh, and all it has is the one s orbital, it's round, it's spherical, uh, it looks like this, and when these two combine they form two new orbitals um, because there's two orbitals here we have to form two new orbitals um, when they combine. So each hydrogen has one electron, they share those electrons and that forms a bond, <coughs> which again we represent with a line, but it actually those two electrons are shared in a new molecular orbital and that orbital looks very different from the starting two atomic orbitals which are, are spheres and that's what I'm going to show you right now. So here uh, in front of you, I've got a 3D model of um, a hydrogen. It's very boring, it doesn't look uh, particularly interesting. Um, but in this um, model, if I now show, I've got the line showing where it is, but I can overlay now um, molecular orbital, and uh, it actually looks very boring. But what we can see is that the molecular orbital is like this spherical. Um, uh, space where those two electrons sit. And in some respects it kind of makes sense that those two electrons will be sitting somewhere in that space holding those two hydrogens together. So it's not a very complicated molecular orbital. But remember what I said is that when we take uh, two atomic orbitals and we combine them we get one molecular orbital but we also get another one as well because we started with two we must end up with two molecular orbitals. And so the first one that I'm showing you here is the bonding orbital, but there's another one that has no electrons in it, because the two electrons are in this one, um, and it's called the anti-bonding orbital, and it looks like this. So if you look at this uh, orbital, you can see it kind of makes sense, um, because if you put electrons in this orbital, the electrons are not shared between the two hydrogens. There's a, there's a point um, in the middle called a node that runs down the center, as you can see. And, and so it kind of makes sense that if there was uh, electrons in there, that uh, it would be separate. All right, so hydrogen is a very, very simple example, um, but things become a whole lot more complicated when we start having other atoms involved. And I'm just going to take what is actually just a very simple uh, organic molecule, a molecule of ethylene, which looks like this, and we're going to now look at the atomic orbitals of, of ethylene. So here's the 3D model that we have up in front uh, of me, and I'm now going to show you the molecular orbitals. And uh, for the molecular orbitals, um, I wonder if you can guess how many molecular orbitals there would be. Well, if you remember over here, one bond actually represents two molecular orbitals because there's one bonding and there's an antibonding. So if we look over here, we've got bond, 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 bond. There's one, two, three, four, five, six bonds. There are actually 12 molecular orbitals. And the way that they look is now where this uh, will probably blow your mind a little bit because it's, it's a bit weird. So here's the first one. So the first one 
the molecular orbital just covers the whole molecule. So the two uh, electrons are spread out over the entire molecule. Um, they're not sitting between, say, this carbon and hydrogen over there. It's not really the case. Um, they're actually spread over the entire molecule. And if we go to the second uh, uh, molecular orbital, next one highest energy, this is what it looks like. You can see this now kind of looks weird. The next two electrons can sit in two places over the molecule. And so we can do this over the next series of molecular orbitals. We can go to molecular orbital three. We can go to number four. We can go to number five. And all of these orbitals up until now are actually not, they, they, they look very weird, but they're not really important to us. Actually, the most important one is the next one. It's number six. It's the highest energy orbital that has electrons in it because we have six uh, sort of bonding interactions which are represented by molecular orbitals. It's the sixth one, which is the highest energy, which is the most important one. This is what it looks like. And now, if you think about it, what this is looking like when you look at it on its side is actually the representation of ethylene of the pi bond, the double bond. We would normally have drawn it something like this, looking on the side. We would have had two p orbitals like that that have combined. And when they combine, they form this orbital that you are seeing over here. So these two have melded together, the two p orbitals, and we have made a new pi bonding orbital. That is the highest energy orbital. And, and we can go one higher, all right? And we can look at the next one. And this is the antibonding orbital um, of the pi bond. That's what it looks like. And you can see it's also, uh, the electrons are no longer shared between uh, each, each other. Okay, so what does this actually mean for us as, as chemists? Well, the first thing is to realize that when we draw out structures like this, um, they're actually wrong. But that's okay. Uh, because it also turns out, um, even though we draw these lines like this indicating a bond, uh, the chemistry actually works out absolutely fine doing it this way. But the chemistry is actually um, affected by what we know as the frontier molecular orbitals. It's the orbital that is at the highest energy, right? When we, we counted that there were going to be six molecular orbitals. As we fill them up from low to high energy, the one that's at the highest energy that's filled is known as the highest occupied molecular orbital, all right? Shortened to HOMO, highest occupied molecular orbital. And the next one in energy, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital are the two most important orbitals to, dis to discuss when we look at reactions. So the important thing to understand here, all this video is wanting to show you, is that molecular orbitals are very complicated. They look very different to what we would imagine when we look at a molecule like this. However, it turns out that all those extra orbitals, even though they're very, very complicated, are not that important. It's actually just two orbitals, which we have to look at in a molecule, and it's the highest occupied molecular orbital, which in the case of ethylene is the pi bond. And pi bonds are reactive. They can act as nucleophiles, and we'll get on to that. Um, and the other one that's important is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. And that is also the, the shape of it and the look of that is very important. And we'll address that again when we look at carbonyl chemistry.